we first want to thank Dr. Isaac Grissom for screaming loud and sparing none. And next we want to thank Brother Jabril for his undying support. Marcus Garvey Institute, located at Parkway in Lauderdale. In the studio, we've got a young man with us who's coming aboard, Brother Paul Outlaw. Well, thank you, thank you. And to my right, we have Brother, take a pause, Michael Fobbs. All right. All right. And as usual, comrade, brother, and friend, Dr. Talud Alami. Thank you, thank you so much. Yes, sir, anytime. Say hi to the audience because we're going to blast today. Hello, people. <laughs> hello, my hello. friends, my family. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, my, sir. My people. Yeah. Today, we have a long laundry list. We've got a lot to talk about in a short time to talk about. We're talking about the gifts, strengths, courage, the bravery, the creativity, the diversity and the beauty of African-Americans. But mind you, though, we are still on our critical examination. You know, we, we, we are going to blast today, but today we're going to have a party for African-Americans. And as I understand it, we have a call on the line right away. Is that right? Alan, are you there? Yes, sir. All right. Let's, let's start off with you today, Alan. Take two or three minutes. We've got a lot to cover. Yes. Oh, we, 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 I was saying about like, a lot of people look like us, but don't think like us. You know how America be a good example of something? You know, the mayor of son did something real heinous that not feel. Now, Joe Brown, because he both had called in last week, and I think Eckers was kind of like, be honest and just call you and let us know what he uh, wants to vote for. You know, he was a long uh, partner with A.C. Ward. You know, about all these great kids in the, the Kevin County area? Now, you know, I want to ask Joe Brown, man to man, black man, you know, character to character, how do you feel that a black man can get away with a 13-year-old child and get the virgin dog, uh, and, and, and he doesn't get on the uh, sex register that he was saying about the country club? That black people want country clubs, too. We have to make sure that our prosecutors have our community interest in mind. You know, because we have black folks in our community, Mr. Ray. Yes. Okay. Let's call self hatred. Okay. Thank you for your call, Alan, and your comment. All right. No problem. Anytime. Give us uh, a call whenever you feel like it. <laughs> That's all I can say to that one. Let's let's go first today. Now he he. Um, he mentioned self-hatred. That's what I got out of the essence of, of his call. Self-hatred is what I got out of it. Um, of course, that's in a way uh, out of what we're talking about. But uh, uh, let's go to Brother Michael Thobbs first. I want to go to you first. You were new on the ship. Right. So let's go to you first and uh, talk about any aspect of the conversation you want to talk about. Right. Uh, and kind of related to what the office, I mean, the uh, caller is talking about, uh, and you was indicating that we were going to be critical. Uh, As well. Right. <laughs> right. But uh, I want to kind of get away from the being critical of okay. the cause, and not to say that we should leave it completely, but oftentimes we are critical of our people. So we know what we do and don't do, so we need to now start talking to and teaching our people what to do to get out of those conditions and overcome those conditions that we're in. We've dropped the ball. We've been here 459 years, and it's been a designed plan to teach you against each other and yourself. So we've accomplished, great many of us have accomplished quite a bit over the years, but we've dropped the ball, we sit down, we say, I've accomplished mine, I'm through, I'm done, or some of us gotten tired. But we never prepare those under us to take over for when the time comes when we are off the scene. So we need to now start teaching our people what we need to do to get together, stay together, and become strong and united so that we can overcome these uh, atrocities. I like that. You, you, you spoke about solution. And I've stated the last couple of shows that we have a partial solution. And we will build on that solution 
going forward, as we go forward. I, I want to add something to the show. We're going to have a word for today on this show. Today's word is capitalism. C-A-P-I-T-A-L-I-S-M. Capitalism. Did I spell that correctly? Right. So, um, give us a call, audience, and tell us what that word means. Capitalism. I want to go now to the young brother. Brother Paul, <laughs> brother Paul Outlaw, talk to us in the aspect of the subject matter, which is a long list that you want to talk about. Talk about it. I can't imagine how young you guys can see. <laughs> I guess I am the youngest. <laughs> but right now, I feel that we, me in particular, have to take on the responsibility of, of grabbing a hold to our youth. We have to start somewhere, and like the brother said, we have to prepare the kids to take over the torch. We have the information. The information has been passed down. Now it's time for us to start implementing some practical applications. It's so much going on in our community today that it's overwhelming. I, I say this time and time again, it's larger than life. And we have to start somewhere. We're going to develop people who can be productive members of society and have things change to benefit the impoverished people, which are us. But right now, we have to start somewhere. We have to start with amassing the strengths and the gifts of our youth into the same direction by teaching them and educating them of the things that they need to have to sharpen their tools so that when the torch is passed, they're at another level. They're not just trying to teach other kids the information that we've passed on from generation to generation on, on what's happened and what we're going through. It's time for us to start developing individuals that can start doing something. We have too much to handle right now. I can start talking about economic cooper cooperatives. Yeah, we can do some of that. It's going to put a little dent in it. But for the most part, if we don't raise our kids effectively so that when they are at an age, when they can partake in the economics of this community, of this country, that they're doing what we can't seem to do unitedly. I mean, as a unit, as a black people, right now we got too many people that see what the problem is and we're trying to do something but it's not collectively mm -hmm. so we have to say okay well we have some work to do with our adults right now but let's start the slate off fresh with these new kids that are yes. coming up so when they, 20 years from now when they are competing in the economy in this capitalist society they can make some things happen they can change some things we all know that capitalism was created and can only thrive on slavery. It's a philosophy that we've taken on as our own, but it's to our detriment to be in a capitalist society. And I'm not talking about we need to take on a different philosophy. No, these philosophies don't work for us. We need to take on the philosophy that we need to uplift our people and bring them out of bondage and out of poverty. And by any means necessary, like Malik Shabazz said, by any means necessary. And capitalism is not the answer. And I'm not saying that we have to take on some other European philosophy, Marxism, um, communism, and all these other philosophies that don't work either. We need to come up, we are unique people and we have unique answers to what we need to do. And we need to thrive on finding those solutions for ourselves. Mm -hmm. The best way to start off is with rearing our kids okay. in the right direction. Thank you, Brother Paul. Dr. Talu, talk to us about whatever you want to talk to us about. Right. But also also say something about collective work and responsibility. Collectivism. Exactly. Which goes to you. Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and you just hit my, my point okay. that I'm going to make. Good. Is that um, oftentimes in our history, we've heard individuals stand before our people and say that... Um, we are negative, we are this, we are no good, no count. And then you have that other group that say we're the best and we're everything, we accomplish everything, you know. 
Um, so one group is sugarcoating the situation, and the other group is primarily nailing us, nailing that last cough, nail in the coffin on us, so to okay. speak, right? So we kind of like, we have to balance this information out, okay? And what we, we have to do, uh, we can't ever uh, overlook the reality and the truth of our existence. We can't sugarcoat it all the time. You know, you can't, you can't say, okay, the guy that, that, that just murdered Miss so-and-so, so-and-so down on the corner, you know, that was a little thing. It's, you know, we're killing people all over the city. That don't mean anything. And we can't turn around and say, let's catch everybody and kill them, too. Mm -hmm. We got to strike that balance. Mm -hmm. And that balance is leadership and the people. Mm -hmm. There's a balance between. We have to understand as the grassroots, we are responsible. The leadership, as those leaders, have to accept the fact that they are responsible. Yes. Okay? And they, and we each have a responsibility to each other. Yes. Okay? So we can't just continue to think that a critical thinker is just beating our people down and, in, 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 you know, beating them down in the ground. That's not true. Mm -hmm. We have to, we have to uh, make discoveries. Yes analysis yes. and then come with solutions. Mm -hmm. Okay, for for us, you know, on this particular radio show, I think uh, what's important about it is that we don't sugarcoat. So far, since I've been a part of this show, we've been dealing with reality and the truth. It, it hurts, <laughs> you know what I mean? It hurts, but you, you have to deal with it. Yeah, well, we think it hurts. We think it hurts, it's psychological, right. we yeah. think it hurts. And then sometimes you hear language that you haven't heard before. Uh -huh. Things put in a way that you've never heard before, so you've got to take some time for it to register. It's the exact same thing that somebody said 400 years ago. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know? yeah. So, so that's, that's my point. Okay. I, I think that we're doing a great job. Okay? Yes. I mean, I think in, in the 21st century, black people are doing a great job. But there are some things that we have to do about the money. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we, and we have to have an attitude adjustment about the money. Yeah. All right. Now we we wage tremendous power as far as our skin color is concerned, being black and all. The president of the United States, the the, the uh, 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 attorney general. You know, and you can go on and on. It's for mayors all over the United yeah. States and all kinds of things that really show that we are a progressive people right. politically. I think we may have that politics down pat, yeah. but we don't have getting the money down pat. We don't have that yet. And you mentioned, uh, you, you guys, brothers mentioned uh, your feelings. Mm -hmm. We think it hurts, yeah. but it's a feeling thing. Yeah. So we have to control our feelings and uh, look at the feelings, the emotional aspect of it, and compare it with the intellectual aspect, decision making, reality, truth. You see, and we're also very creative, and we tend to lose our creativity to someone else. So you were talking about it as we were preparing for the show, uh, Dr. Talu, but how we lose our creative, our mm -hmm. patterns, and it goes to somebody sure. else. Yeah. We can't uh, go to court, and we get tired and fill up. But real quickly, black people can and will excel at any sport mm -hmm. that has ever, ever been created on the earth. Black people are the creators of all American styles of music. Music that was created here in the Americas. Blues, jazz, ragtime, swing jazz, Dixieland jazz, rhythm and blues, rap, and hip-hop. Black people are the creators of the American slang language. Embellished the fashion and style industry which carry over the movies to the movies and in news, media, images, including social media. Brother Michael... Can you say something about our creativity, along with what you want to say? Okay. Well, with all that said and done, uh, we have excelled in a great many things. Become very wealthy, but unlike uh, uh, Harry Belafonte, a lot of us get our wealth and we sit on it, or we swander it. So many of us have gone broke, millionaires, thirty-three million dollars broke tomorrow. A hundred million broke tomorrow. So we don't use our resources for what we need to use them. That is to help uplift our people. And one of the uh, uh, 
good sports athletes and, and uh, person that really excelled, he took his resources once he got out of sports and even before he got out of sports uh, and open, open all, uh, Magic Johnson, mm -hmm. open all kind of businesses, provided jobs. And that's something we have to do. That's why I say integration was one of the worst things to happen to us. I grew up in the Walker home. Uh, they named it Walker Home after Dr. Joseph Walker, who was the founder of Universal Life Insurance Company and Tri-State Bank. We grew up in some nice uh, communities where the communities were uh, together. They looked after each other. You got out of school. Your neighbors looked after you. And we had uh, uh, entrepreneurs who opened stores and laundromats and service stations that were up on the corner we went and worked for. Once integration come along, yes. we've lost all of this. So we have to uh, teach our children that you must take your resources and use them uh, wisely yes. and pursue not just getting a job, we need to build. We have become the biggest consumer and the least producing people on this earth. That is so true. And let's also start talking to our young people about not just looking for a job. Even if you find a good job, be, think, start thinking about investing in and open up your own entrepreneurial enterprises, your own businesses uh, going forward using our strength skills uh, and courage to do that. Um, but we had a panel discussion on Wednesday night and Brother Baruti mentioned all of the money that we bring in as a people. But we are consumers. I forgot his exact figure, that it, but it was a large figure. Trillions of dollars. Trillions of dollars right, and, and yet we own less, there's one figure that says we own less than one-tenth of one percent of the United States uh, wealth. Uh, we don't own any of the tall buildings, skyscrapers, large trucking lines, uh, enterprise systems. With all of the money and all of these gifts that we possess, yet we're on the bottom of the economic totem pole. Brother Paul, we want to go to you next. Okay, first I'd like to correct something. I've been seeing kids and you know, it, we don't have kids. That's what they gave us to name our children to keep us, to remind them that we are animals. We're not kids. We have children. Very but, good. Good point. But to, <clears throat> to go further, you know, with the, with the amount of revenue that comes through our hands, it's noted that we are the 16th richest nation if we pulled all our resources together with those trillions of dollars that we have coming through our community. There's a difference between rich and wealth. And we, time and time again, we find ourselves being rich and not wealthy. Because when we're in a system, such as this capitalist, assist, this capitalist society that we live in, we have constraints that won't allow us to amass wealth. If you make a million dollars a year with the taxes, with all the laws that they've created for us to, to keep us from holding on to that wealth, we find ourselves expanding to spend the money so that we can hold on to it. So if you make $100,000 a year and you just do your taxes and you don't own anything, they usually take most of it back. So what you have to do is you have to expand to spend it, which means that you have to acquire debt. So that's a, it's a systematic, it's like what Martin Luther King said before he died. This system has to change because it's a racist system that won't allow us the opportunity to amass wealth. So we have to train, we have to educate our kids to start doing things differently. Children. Yeah, children, exactly. Exactly, and I'm glad you caught me on that. Because that's a part mm -hmm. of being conditioned that I have a habit of doing things that I know are not right. But our children have to be educated on how to amass wealth. And one of the things we have to recognize is that the talents that we have are far superior than anyone else. When we start practicing using our talents, we even stretch that margin of difference because we develop the skills. And we have to let our ch children know that we can practice on our talents and we can become far better than our counterparts. But we have to instill those 
traditions in, in our children because we see just by pure talent that we have artisans, we have athletes, we have businessmen, we have entrepreneurs that are just using mere talent. So what we have to do is go ahead and start utilizing our talents and, 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 and creating a skill set that's, that's far better than anyone else. And we'll be able to amass wealth at that point because we'll know more and we'll do more because we're more talented. Another great point. Last week, I talked about George Zimmerman. And I said that it was Ja Rule who was going to take him on in a fight in the ring. It was not Ja Rule, it was DMX. DMX. Okay, so I want, when you mentioned co making self-corrections, I'm glad you said that because I want to correct something that I said on the air. So it was not Ja Rule who was going to fight Zimmerman. It was DMX, DMX and we African Americans criticized it, and, and so far that fight's been called up. But Dr. Talu, uh, tell us some things. Well, first and foremost, <clears throat> as you, you mentioned, um, uh, in, in comparison, uh, our contributions to the American way of life is this, that if African American people were not here, America would be just another European monolithic society, mm -hmm. just like France, Italy, and all the rest of them. They are not doing anything. They are not on top of the world. America is on top of the world because of us, mm -hmm. black people. We put America as number one with our label, our talents. Mm -hmm. We made America the focus point of the world where people all around the world want to come here. Mm -hmm. It's because of us. Yes. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? It, we did that. I understand. Okay, so we don't need to be asking anybody for permission to do a damn thing. That's right. We have to do what we want to do when we decide that we want to do it. That's right. We can't be rushed into anything. We can't be dragged into anything. We have to have clear thought, great ideals, and a philosophy and a narrative for us to get to where we want to get to. Mm -hmm. So we don't need anybody pounding on our community, 43 million people, they this and they that. We can check each other whenever we get ready. Yeah. But other ethnic groups can't do that. Okay. Well, see, I can talk bad about myself and about my children mm -hmm. and about my neighborhood if I want to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and be telling the truth if that's what I want to do. And the people in my neighborhood, my children, everybody else still know I love them. Yeah. But that other ethnic group, we won't know that. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So the thing is, our greatness is written into stone. But our problem is, we psychologically believe that the white man, the quote-unquote white man, don't want us to do this, that, and other, and so on, so on, so on, so on. He's busy. He doesn't have time to deal with our issues. <laughs> he got his own problem. <laughs> he doesn't have time to come make sure black people do this right and black people do that right. We have to do that. That's our job. We're the men in this society. We're the men. We're responsible for everything. We're responsible for everything that happens in our families, in our communities, in our education, we're responsible. And we have to take that responsibility. We have to say, okay, yeah, like Mike said, well, we dropped the ball, mm -hmm. but you can always pick the ball back pick up. Pick the ball back up. Okay, so we yeah. pick the ball back up. Okay, Move, moving along, we have two minutes left. Dr. Naeem Agbar said in one of his pre presentations, and you hear me bringing this up often, that African Americans were brought from Africa, brought to this country for one thing and one thing alone, and that was labor. Free labor. I won't say cheap labor, but free labor. Now, is that a testament to the strength of African Americans, Brother Michael? Well, that we were not supposed to survive, and yet we persist. Right. And I've written several papers to that effect. Is that a testament to our strength? We, yeah. so we persist. A well, testament to the fact that we are the original people. 
and we'll be here when nobody else will be here right? because we're the original people. So, uh, and once we stayed, and, and that was one of the main things that they uh, pushed when they brought us from our native land on the Middle Passage, and they dropped you off in Brazil and different places. They put you on a farm to teach you how to be that N word. Mm -hmm. And that was a nothing or nobody, subhuman. But uh, in, in, the, in the process, once you learn how to be that, they brought you here. Because the Native American wasn't going for it. He wasn't going to be a slave. So they brought us from our land, took our religion, our God, and everything else from them. So once we got back connected with each other to some extent and learned how to communicate with each other in the slave, uh, on the slave field, then we began to uh, try to move forward and get out of that. Okay. I, I wanna Dr. Tyler. I want to make a point here. Go ahead. And, and you brought up something that um, is a half truth. When you said that Dr. Naeem Akbar, which, you know, I, I studied him for many years, like all of us had, mm -hmm. uh, made that statement. Mm -hmm. Black people were captured and brought to America not only for labor. See, they were integrated into the social structure, the government, and the commercial structure of America. Black people was, there were slaves working in the patent department, patenting. There were slaves uh, working in governmental offices around the southern states, creating and shaping societies. Okay, so they needed our brain power. It's not our physical labor that built this country. It's our brain power that built this country. And right today, and if you pay attention, uh, big corporations are still trying to suck up the black brain power. And that's our problem. We give our brain power to others rather than using our brain power for our own advancement.